So we all know blues is just three simple chords, right? But that doesn't mean there's not lots of things that we could and should be doing to keep it interesting. So here are my top tips to take your blues rhythm playing to the next level. So let us start really simple and build up the complexity as we go through. And the first thing we can think about is playing every chord as a seven chord. So in the key of A, we get A as our one chord, D as the four chord and E as our five chord. But we can play all of these as seven chords just by taking our normal E shaped bar chord and removing our little finger, which brings in this note, a flat seven there on the D string, which gives it a much more crunchy, bluesy sound. Now by playing all three of these chords as sevens like this, this is something which is unique to blues and an essential part of the sound we're aiming for. Another essential part of the blues sound is mixing together minor and major tonalities. And we can do this really simply with our bar chord here, just by hammering on with this middle finger. You see, without that finger on, we get A minor seven, and with it, of course, A seven. So this note is the difference between minor and major. So by hammering on, we get that movement from minor to major, a classic part of the blues sound. Then to take these concepts one step further, let's look at the classic 1-4 blues rhythm pattern. You know, that kind of sound. So all I'm doing there is taking our A7 bar chord with that hammer on with the middle finger on the G string, but just playing the D, G and B strings. So I've got a bar across those three strings at the fifth fret, and then hammering on to the 6th fret with that middle finger and then barring again at the 7th fret on those same 3 strings and this gives us like a partial D chord so it's like 1 chord alternating with the 4 chord there so alternate between this bar with the hammer on and then this bar here and come up with a little rhythm pattern that kind of a thing so that's on the A7 position and then you can move that up so at the D7 position same at E7. So far, everything's been based around this E-shaped bar chord. We don't really just want to use one shape and just jump around the neck with it all the time. We want to find other ways to play these chords. Now you might think the obvious thing to do is use the A-shaped bar chord then to play like your D here at the fifth fret. But actually, I want to show you a different way using the C7 shape chord because this is going to be much more powerful as we'll see in a moment. So just take your normal C chord in open position here and then a little finger onto the third fret on the G string to make it a C7. But then if we ignore these two open E's on either side and just play the four notes in the middle, we get a chord that we can use anywhere on the guitar like that. So of course this is a C7 here. If we come up two frets, we get a D7 and then two frets again, an E7. So we can use that in our A major blues. So I said this chord was more powerful, and the first thing we can do to start unlocking its power is add in a ninth. So with our D7 here, what we want to do is take this note of the third fret of the B string, which is the root note of D, and move this up two frets to become an E, which would be the ninth of the chord. To do this, we need to adjust our fingering, so it's going to look like this. So now I've got second finger on the root note of the fifth fret of the A string, and then first finger, fourth fret of the D, and then third and fourth fingers are the fifth fret on the G and B strings. Now this is a much more sophisticated kind of sound, so we can use that on the D chord, up two frets and we get the E chord as well. Now there's a different way people like to finger this chord as well, which adds in even more options in a moment, which is to play a little bar across all of the top three strings with the third finger there, and then the first two fingers are going to play the fifth fret on the A string, fourth fret on the D string, just as before. This just adds in this extra note, the fifth on the top string, gives it a little bit of extra. Now we've got this more sophisticated, almost jazz sounding ninth chord, we can start adding some chromatic movements to our progressions, which is really going to take things up a notch. So what you saw me doing there was coming from the one chord of A, but then on my way to the four chord of D, I came via this exact same chord shape, just up a fret, so it'd be like a D sharp nine, resolving down into my D chord. 
Now this sounds really great. Of course you could try doing it with just your normal A-shaped bar chords, but you can hear that sounds rubbish. But with these more complex sounding chords, this really works. Now, you can also do this on the five chord of E, where you'd be coming up one fret to an F, landing down to there. And then once we get to the end of the blues progression, you can use these back to back like that. So you're going F into E, and then D sharp into D, getting these four chromatic chords in a row. The next thing we can do with this chord is use our little finger to come up two frets on the high E and add a 13th to it. Now you're not going to want to hold this chord shape because that's really hard, but really come on and off with this little finger to add a bit of movement to your rhythm. You know, that kind of thing. Now if you combine that with the chromatic movements we just looked at, you can get quite a lot of interesting sounds with that. Then to take this a step further, this whole bar on the top three strings can move up two frets and back down again. Now this works really well with some slides like this. That kind of thing. And really, these are two different triads, both of which work in the context of the chord, so it's always gonna sound great. Now of course, you could use that also on the the E as the five chord, and combining that with the chromatic movement, we could get Now let's move on and look at diminished chords, which give us that kind of a sound. Now the best place to use diminished chords in blues is usually right after the four chord by stealing some of the time you'd normally be playing on that four chord. So instead of playing two bars on the four chord like that, we could play one bar on the four chord, and then one bar on a diminished chord. But which diminished chord is this? Well, whatever your four chord is, so in this case a D, you want to come up one semitone, so I'm playing a D sharp, a D sharp diminished. But how do we finger this diminished chord? Well, if you think about a normal D7 chord here in open position, it's going to be the same, except this open D, we need to bring up one fret to make it a D sharp. So we're going to have to bar across these top four strings at the first fret, and then the other two fingers on the G and high E strings as they would be for the D7 chord. So that's our D sharp diminished. But now, the really cool thing about these chords is when we move them up three frets, we get exactly the same notes, just in a different order. So I can come from the first fret to the fourth fret, to the seventh fret and up to the tenth fret, and it's all the same notes, just in a different order. And this is really useful for adding some movement to your playing. So from the four chord, we could do something like that, where I'm chromatically into the four chord, using that little slide and then shifting through the diminished up three frets at a time, and then back to my one chord of A. That kind of thing. So now we've seen some more sophisticated ideas with other chords, let's come back to our original E-shaped bar chord and see how we can make this a bit more sophisticated, starting by adding the 13th. So what we want to do is take these three notes from the low E, D and G strings, but finger them like this. So first finger, fifth fret on the low E, second finger, fifth fret on the D, third finger, sixth fret on the G. So that's our basic chord shape, just noting that we're muting the A with this first finger, and that frees up our little finger to come to seventh fret on the B, which is our 13th of the chord, which makes it sound a lot more complex. Now, what works really well with this, actually, is approaching chromatically from below like that. It's a really nice sound. So let's just try approaching the one chord from below and then the four chord chromatically from above using these shapes we've learned. Then we can take this 13 chord a step further by playing a little bar with our little finger over to the high E, which adds a B, a ninth to the chord. Now this is sounding really sophisticated. 
Then this chord is a super nice way to end your blues. Either approach it chromatically from above, so from the B flat, landing on the A, ending like that, or come down two frets to a G, and then up to A flat, and then up to the A. Great way to end. So I hope that was useful. If you want to study this more in depth and learn a piece which incorporates a lot of these ideas, then click on this video here. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.